guys welcome to another video today i got a very good one for you guys i'm gonna be doing an interview with darius clark or better known as dak on the track now this man has one of the highest verticals in the world i believe it's 47 inches which is just crazy so i'm gonna do an interview with him and i'm gonna ask him all the questions about his training method what he does and all that good stuff so make sure to stick around watch the whole video because you're gonna learn a lot i'm gonna learn a lot so i'm so excited for that and also make sure to subscribe because this is gonna be all 2022 i'm gonna find you guys a lot of good athletes to interview i've already done an interview with levon sands a professional triple jumper he was a bronze medalist at the olympics so make sure you guys subscribe like i said because you're gonna learn a lot this year all right let's go Uh, what's up guys today i'm here with darius clark thank you for doing this darius clark i really appreciate it why don't you give a quick introduction of yourself um so my name is darius clark known as that um, i have the highest standing vertical tied for the highest standing vertical at um 48.5 And I am out of, I'm currently in the transfer portal in the NCAA out of Texas A&M. Um, and before that, I was out of Florida State University. And we're seeing where I'm going to head to next. We'll find out within the next couple of weeks. Um, but in the meantime, I have, you know, I, my app just came out, DAC Athletics, for um, training purposes for anybody that wants kind of, you know, a training or a scheduling basically and yeah well okay first off that's pretty cool we'll get back to the app in a little bit but then, <laughs> you start off you by saying you have a 48 point what five 48.5 yes sir that's crazy so is that like official um so i know um my dog chris he he had um he had broke it. I don't know how to make them like official with like Guinness, but he had broke it. He got the, you know, the height on video and all that. And then that motivated me to go and test it. And of course I got the same exact number 48.5, um, which I'll be posting probably or tomorrow actually. When, when did you first realize that you had something special in terms of explosive ability or athletic ability? When I was little, I know when I was like from five, to like eight all i did was just jump like you know how most people just you know walk everywhere i was a weird i was a very strange kid i i literally jumped everywhere and um you know when people say it's genetics i don't really believe it's genetics but i do believe it has a lot to do with what i did as a child and um it's really just like the training just progressed from there so like, you know, from five to 10, just everywhere, just jumping. And then when I was a fresh, I started going to the gym as a sophomore, a sophomore in high school. You know, I just did basic exercises, squats, um, bench press, you know, uh, I was big on cardio and just all of that. So I put on like, I think it was like 10 to 15 pounds my sophomore year in high school and after that, my junior year, that's when I got into the more explosive exercises, such as power cleans, you know, power snatches, hang snatches, um, a lot of unilateral exercises, just more, you know, smaller muscle, muscle group specific exercises. And then it was just like year after year after year, I learned more and more. And that just, you know, got this, I got this knowledge of like what I need to do to get to where I want to be which is, yeah. you know, get a 50-inch standing vertical. Wow, so you're aiming for 50 inches. Yes, sir, that's the goal. That's, that's amazing, man. That's a, that's a very high vertical leap right there. So yeah. you, you said earlier on, you um, a lot of people say it's genetics. So personally for me, um, genetics play a huge role in what, you, you know, you can accomplish athletically, but of course you also have to put the work in. You also did uh, sports. What sports did you uh, participate in? I know you did track. We're going to get to that, but did you play football, basketball, anything like that? Yeah. So in high school, I was mostly football and then I just started doing track. I started doing track my uh, junior year and then I started okay. taking it serious my last year in high school, my senior year. And what was your best long jump uh, as a senior in high school? 
So my best long jump was 24 2. Okay. But um that was like a one, like a one-time thing. My I like I averaged probably low 23s, like a 23-5 was my record before or 23-4 was my record before that. So it just kind of popped out of nowhere. And then my freshman right. year in Duco, that's when it started taking off. So your freshman year at uh, Juco, how was how was that experience? How was what was the biggest difference for you from high school track training to uh, junior junior right? Correct. Yeah. Uh, for well, how was the training different? What was like the biggest change in training? So really, I want to say just the competition and just training itself. Uh, you know, I'm used to you know just getting first and everything, such as like sprints and all of that and like just a lot of the training things that we did in high school and then in juco you know it's real it's some really good athletes in juco i'd say a, a huge percentage of my teammates from juco actually went d1 so you know juco is just a place i like to i like to think of you know juco or community college as a place for d1 athletes to get a second chance you know, either it's, you know, they made a mistake in high school or grades not, or uh, yeah, bad grades in high school. And I believe JUCO. So what I want to say is, like, if you don't have a, you know, that huge full scholarship out of high school, I'd highly suggest JUCO, not only because, you know, you can get another chance at getting a full scholarship after JUCO, but because being at a community college is going to make you hungry. It's going to make you you know, just want to do better. It's going to make you train harder. And um, yeah, I don't, I, I mean, I know I wouldn't be in the position I am in right now, you know, having going to Florida state and Texas A&M and then whatever after that, um, if I didn't go to Juco. I know personally for me, when I first, cause I also started jumping pretty late. I'm, I was a jumper in high school as well. I started jumping my junior year, but I was even really participating in track. I was a volleyball player. And my senior oh. year, you know, I ended up jumping 21-10 out of nowhere just randomly. And I mm -hmm. got a scholarship for that. And the goal initially was to go to a Division II school and then use that as my platform to try to go D1. Uh, I liken that to the whole JUCO thing. But I know some very good athletes that went to JUCO. Uh, for example, there was a kid in my high school, Trinity, basketball star, fantastic player. Went to Juco mm -hmm. and I went to a D1 school afterwards. So I definitely agree with you on that right there. So you said you went to uh, Texas A&M and Florida and you did, you did track uh, both of those schools, correct? Correct. So, so, or I went from, I, so out of, after wow. Juco, I went to Florida state. And then mm -hmm. after okay. that, after Florida state, I went to Texas, but, um, an unfortunate situation. I'm not sure. I personally believe it has something to do with COVID. So mm -hmm. um so I was on a I was on a scholarship and so if I got all American, then I'd, you know, get um uh, more stipend, more stipend money. And if yeah. I didn't get all American, then I'd get less. So, you know, pretty fair. I bet it on myself. I'm pretty confident that I get all American. But there was no nationals because, you know, it got canceled because because of COVID in 2020. So nobody got all American. Yeah. So, um, but there was like, you know, you didn't get all American technically. So we have to take your scholarship because it's under contract. So after that, my friend, um, his name is pop. He was at Oklahoma at the time and he was trying to transfer. And, you know, that's my friend from high school. So I try to, of course, get him to Florida state with me. And, um, so I tried that and then I told him about the, you know, the situation because he was offered the same type of scholarship I was. So I was like, all right, that's cool if you're comfortable with that. But if you can, I just asked, I said, I told him to ask for a different kind of scholarship. So like a more guaranteed base. Yeah. And um, so which he did, and then they denied when Florida State asked him why he committed to another school. He said, I didn't like how you're I don't like how your scholarships work or something like that. I don't like how my scholarship is basically. Um, so when he said that FSU automatically just thought that I was down talking to them, that I was, you know, talking all of this mess. So they kicked me off before 
like even asking me about it. I literally learned, I got kicked off the team. So they called my mom first. And then she told me like two days later, like, by the way, you're off the scene. So I didn't really get a chance to explain myself because, you know, they didn't give me a chance. But I don't know if that's the, you know, if that's the real reason I got, you know, kicked off. But I believe it had to do with financial reasons because of COVID. Um, but I'm not really sure. It was a, it was a very interesting situation. So they basically just kicked you off without even ever talking to you about it. Like you found yeah. out to your mom. Yes, it was a very just angering time because, you know, that's just, it doesn't really make sense to me. So would you, would you say college sports in general are po very political? Very political and very yeah. financial, financially driven. Of course. It's like, man. yeah. No, nah, that's true, man. That's how, when I went to school as well, that's the first thing I noticed from high school to uh, college. I was like, this doesn't seem as fun as it used to. It seems very... It's almost like a job, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. Yes. It's, it's a it's a very strict business. So now, okay. So now you're gonna be going to Texas A and M, and you're gonna be competing there. I was at A and M, and then I'm transferring from A and M to another school. I'm looking at Southern Florida, mm -hmm. um, Nebraska, and those are really it. But I'll decide, you know, within a week. Okay. And so why are you transferring or is that like personal reasons? Nah. So I like to talk about it because it's very, this one, this, so what happened with A&M, I believe it's, it's kind of worse than what happened with Florida State. Mm -hmm. So, so in um, nationals, I got 10th. Yeah, I, I was ranked ninth, but I got 10th. So, you know, that's all American, second team, all American. I was I was mad about it, but you know I'll get it next year. So um, number ten jumper in the nation, uh, and then the next meet. So nationals ended on Sunday. I competed on Saturday, mm -hmm. and then I left for an Arizona meet that following Wednesday and competed on Friday. But out from nationals, I kind of tweaked my ankle a little bit, so I wasn't really trying to compete, you know, just like that rapidly like that. I kind of needed a break, but they said, you know, this is a you know, the first meet, you just get a get ahead of everybody else. So I was like, okay, I'll go. So I ended up jumping 25-1, I believe, 765 or something like that, which qualified me for regionals. Um, so not that bad. But two weeks later, you know, because I still, you know, competing back to back to back. So my ankle was just getting worse and worse and worse. I've been asking for a break, but the next three, the next two meets, was I guess big meets for um the school, which was Texas relays and then a dual meet with just us in Texas. So after the dual meet, we because it was like a scored meet, we lost boy, both boys and girls very very bad. Head coach was pissed. He was very very mad. He kicked I think it was forty eight people off of the team the very next day. It was either four. It was either forty. I'm going to say 42 to 48. So wait, was there even a team left? We had like 130 people on the team, 140 people. So it was a very big team. But um, I think he mostly, he kicked off like walk-ons and, um, you know, just, yeah, just walk-ons. But he also kicked me off because I wasn't performing how I needed to be. Mm -hmm. But I've been begging for a break, you know, because my ankle from nationals is messed up and I didn't really get a break and you know it was back to back weeks yeah so um so yeah so he kicked me off and he said I can try out and um in August for next year but you know me being me I'm not you know I'm not trying to try out for a school you know I believe like I'm a all-american NCAA all-american um you know a juco national champion long jumper like that's kind of kind of degrading to just try out to like a school and I believe they wouldn't have even let me on the team because you know they kicked me off for a reason so like why would you let me back on the team so I just decided to enter the transfer portal after that and then yeah that's what happened with that well I'm telling you college really is a business isn't it it is a business <laughs> it's, very it's crazy but that is crazy man wow so now so you're gonna make a decision soon for the school you're going to next yes sir so like, what are the criteria you're basing your selection on? 
Um, just I don't really because I only have one more year left. I was supposed mm-hmm. to graduate last year if I didn't transfer. But yeah. um, you know, I just want just a place that I can just jump and not have to worry about, you know, politics mm-hmm. or just any kind of coaching problem. So it's I'm not picky at all. So what like whatever school. What are you hoping to get in terms of distance? So I have I have to get in the eight meter, <clears throat> the eight meter column above eight meters that's been you know my goal and I believe I would have hit it last year since I got kicked off in the first or the second or the third outdoor meet but I believe I would have hit eight meters last year but that's that's the goal eight meters okay okay and what is your yeah. what's your PR uh 787 seven years and what's that and that was at 25 eight or something yeah 25 nine well, where do you think that would uh rank you in terms of nationally um, I'm not really sure. I know it'll be top, I want to say top seven. I'm not really oh. sure, you know, who's all coming to the, you know, the new people we have coming in. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure. Let's talk about uh, training some more. So tell me how, what, what do you put a lot of emphasis on in terms of, let's say it's the preseason. What are you working on? Like, how do you schedule things in terms of weight room and plyometrics and sprints and all that good stuff? During the off season, um, I like to do more intense exercises. So, uh, so say I'm doing, say quarter squats. I like to do maybe six sets of five or something like that. More longer distance. So like 200, to 400 meter runs 200 meter sprints and so for uh, so in, in terms of increasing speed you like to work longer distance sprints such as no, like to, the longer distance is for cardio i like to do for you know cardio, okay yeah 30 meter to 60 meter for um to increase speed um and i don't like to do a lot of people you know think i do like say resisted sprints so like you know running with a band like somebody holding a band um, running with a sled, but I don't like to do a lot of resistant sprints. If I'm going to do resistant sprints, it's going to be up a up a very slight hill. Um, but most of the time, I like to do it's assisted sprints. So um, you know, have somebody pull you instead of you know pull against you to just run faster. Because uh, this is person I list. His name is Doctor Andy Galpin. He said if you're trying to run faster. Why would you have somebody, um, you know, that's when he talked about assisted versus resisted training or running. And for increased speed, I believe assisted training. And so when you started implementing assisted training into your routine, did you notice a big difference from before and afterwards? Or was it more like a slight improvement? Yeah, I'd say it was a more slight improvement. I don't really you know, emphasize, sprint. I just like to do um, like jumping workouts. Um, but if I did, like I dropped my 100 time, it was like 10.9 and I got it down to 10.6, but it was just like a, um, you know, I didn't, I don't really focus on sprinting. The only reason I do sprints is to um, help with my long jump because you need speed to, you know, jump long. But, um, I mostly focus on explosiveness. That's really, you know, my main focus, either from short sprints or, you know, just heavy weights uh, in the weight room um, to just anything. To uh, I like to, tra- right, that's another thing I like to do is do nervous system training. Mm, and when people, system, you know, yeah. Yes. So, um, and the way I do that is I like to do it on a, like the last day of the week kind of thing. Do like two sets of four drop jumps. Um, maybe three sets of three heavy quarter squats. Uh, just like very low rep, high intensity, high intense um exercise. I'm gonna ask you a series of questions. What are, what is your top three weight um weightlifting exercises? Um, so definitely quarter squats. I like, um, uh, what well you said, explosive exercises, weightlifting, weightlifting. Oh, weightlifting. All right. So I like quarter squats 
and elevated full range of motion squats, either with dumbbells mm-hmm. or a barbell. Um, and for three, I'd say seated elevated calf raises. You know, I do a lot of those in my uh, program. So, you know, how regular calf raises, they help. It's supposed to work your gastrocnemius or, you know, your main calf muscle. Yeah. Um, but the seated um, elevated, it's so it helps. It targets the soleus, which is behind the gastro. So it just targets, you know, the soleus. Yeah, and so the um, on the outside. Yeah. So that muscle is actually very, you know, it's has a lot to do with explosive movements. Um, it's one of the strongest muscles and most neglected. Nobody really focuses. Like you'll never hear a coach say, we're gonna work the, you know, soleus today. But um, but yeah, that's a very slept on muscle, I would say. Interesting. Yeah, that's um that's the that's the first time I've heard somebody say that that's something that should really be focused on. That's mm-hmm. new to me, and I like learning about these things because um, I'm a trainer as well, and I do a lot of different type of things. So that's something I'll definitely start implementing in my own type of things. Okay, yeah. so now what, what are your top three explosive exercises? Um, So I like to do um, unilateral dumbbell snatches. So mm-hmm. stay on one leg, um, have two dumbbells, and you just, you know, do a snatching movement. Um, that and quarter squats, of course, for explosive. And um, and drop jumps. Drop jumps. Drop jumps, quarter squats, and um, this dumbbell snatches. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. And how, mu- how much emphasis do you put on core? So I don't do core every week. Every, not every week. Um, every day I'm at. Yeah. I like to do it maybe two to three times a week. Um, I like to do, you know, planks. Uh just toe touches, just just tone just tone in on at core exercise. It's not really focused too much on it. You, you know, it's like it's your center, so it holds everything together. You don't want any extra movements going on. It keeps everything nice and stable. So really very important in that area as well. And just especially lower core exercises, they really help out with your hip flexors or your hip muscles in general which are extremely important when it comes to running faster, jumping, and just um, athletic ability overall. Um, and okay, so do you Do you also work on your upper body? Is that something you target as well? Yeah. Yeah, I like to do upper body maybe two times a week. Just like a couple of exercises two times a week. So like four to five exercises per week, upper body. Okay, that could be okay. tricep pushdowns to curls to um, plyo pushups. Uh, I don't really do bench, but that would be a good one. Okay, okay. And, okay, so now you're also a uh, trainer, correct? Yeah. And then you also have this app coming out. Uh, talk about the app. Like- so my website has just been finished. It's um, ddacathletics.com, and the app is connected with that. What that is, it's just uh, – so it's going to be three different programs. Um. The first one's called the Kangaroo Club. It's yearly based, um, monthly subscription. And um, so it's the Kangaroo Club, which is for, you know, people with weight room experience, maybe two to three years weight room experience. The next one is called Bunny Crew. And that's for, you know, people kind of new to weights. So it's, and it's only three days a week. Um, and the next one or the last one is five days a week. Um, but yeah, the Bunny Crew is, three days a week from low intensity or plyos to um, low intensity or not low intensity. I want to say simple exercises, um, a lot of mobility and just things that, you know, kind of, so you can progress into the more advanced exercises. And then the last one is just going to be a um, knee rehab program, which is three months long three days a week and it's just strengthening your you know everything the patella to everything in the knee area because there's been a lot of uh i've heard of a lot of knee injuries and people really don't know how you know what they should do to rehab and i think that'll just help a lot of people and um 
and yeah, and that's just what I'm starting out with. I'm trying to get a, a weight loss program, um, shin splint recovery, you know, back pain or back relief program. Um, just a lot of things, but this is just the, like what I'm starting out with. Man, that's, that's, that's so cool, man. So what, so like when you're creating these programs, like how do you put the information together? I know a lot comes from experience as well, but do you do research? Do you work with other people? I was at, um, it was a it's true fit, uh, this true fit gym. And I've met, uh, he was a real good trainer and he, he knew a lot about, um, mobility and knee exercises yeah. and um, yeah so I've you know talked with him a lot about it along with doing you know reading studies doing my own research um, you know um, looking into um, other trainers such as Paul Favorites um, P with PJF Performance um, Knees Over Toes guy of course um, and just people like that just doing you know just kind of mixing it up so just all of everything, really. Thank you for giving me this interview. I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you for your time, man. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me.